2020 has been hectic for Kern County officials dealing with the coronavirus and all the fallout, including trying to help hundreds of businesses stay afloat while dealing with budget issues in the face of this pandemic. And joining us this morning to talk a little bit more about a number of topics is County Administrative Officer Ryan Alsop. First off, thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Ryan, let's begin with the budget. Some decisions uh, made, including uh, more funding for the fire department, uh, just one of many. What was the biggest challenge for you heading into this budget cycle? Well, we're being impacted by some foundational problems that we've always had uh, here in Kern. It's uh, some really lack of year over year growth in our two major revenue sources, which are property tax revenue and sales tax revenue. And this year, the, those problems are compounded by uh, the contract, overall contraction in our economy due to COVID-19 um, and the prolonged, what we're seeing is a, a kind of a prolonged uh, reduction in, in oil production, um, a, a downturn in all of the ancillary businesses that are involved with uh, oil production here locally. The price of oil, you know, a barrel of oil is down. All of those things have an impact on county revenues and just challenge our ability to uh, pay for all the things that we need to pay for uh, across all of our business areas. How is the coronavirus specifically impacting the budget? Which aspects are being impacted the greatest by the virus? Uh, I, I think the response uh, that we've had uh, overall as a state uh, to, to uh, the pandemic, I mean, closing, shutting down the economy uh, in a prolonged way, uh, you know, has an, has an effect on, you know, uh, pro, uh, sales tax revenue that flows into the county. It's a key revenue source. Um, that is a, a, a major challenge. Uh, we, we had to fill up a $25 million hole this year. Uh, that was, that's an acute problem related to COVID-19 here uh, in, our, in our county's budget. We're really concerned about next fiscal year. So fiscal year 21-22. Um, the projections, our current projections, uh, are telling us that that very likely could be a, a worse fiscal year for us and a, a, a bigger challenge uh, budgetarily for us. So uh, we hope we're wrong. Uh, we hope uh, things get back open. Uh, we hope the economy turns around. We don't know what will happen with COVID. We don't know what the governor is going to be doing with COVID going forward. Uh, so all of those things are, uh, are challenges and uh, things that we're going to have to be uh, paying attention to going forward. Now let's talk about some reopening issues here in a second. But first, I want to jump back. Uh, there has been some financial assistance from outside sources, millions of dollars coming in. First, is there any left and is there any more in the works that might be coming our way? So I hope there's more. Uh, yes, there are. Uh, there, there's some con the discussions happening in D.C. Uh, I hope there's more. Uh, there is money left. Uh, we have allocated a hell of a lot of it uh, to a lot of different areas. Obviously, we provided some financial assistance mm -hmm. to businesses, uh, PPE distribution to businesses. Uh, the board just recently provided uh, authorized a some rent and mortgage assistance. There are a variety of things. This money is being used to pay for our alternative care site at the fairgrounds. It's being paid to bring in additional nursing staff to staff ICU beds at hospitals. So uh, super expensive stuff. Uh, the money's going fast. Uh, a lot of it's being used to pay for our own out-of-pocket expenses. Uh, we've given some to area cities. Uh, so uh, yeah, we're, we are looking forward to the federal government making some decisions. Uh, we certainly could use more, uh, more of that money, at least an extension on the money that we have. It's set we're supposed to spend all of that before the end of the calendar year. Uh, we'd like to see a simple extension of uh, uh, the, uh, the window of time we have to spend the money that we already have. Uh, so uh, looking forward to some action by the federal government on that. Previously, the Kern Public Health Department has said Kern County will not come off the watch list and reopen by itself, but rather California as a whole will do so. But now with San Diego and Orange counties coming off the watch list and starting to reopen, is that still the case for us locally or is the county getting new guidance on that? So San Diego, the, the counties that are coming off the watch list are not reopening. Uh, that's a little bit confusing. Uh, the the uh, What they can do is begin to uh, uh, potentially uh, move uh, open schools uh, for in-classroom uh, teaching. Uh, there's a waiver process for that, and counties that are off the watch list are able, and meeting metrics are able to potentially 
uh, be granted waivers to allow kids to go back to school. Uh, but uh, the the uh, the status of uh, you know the current uh, business closures uh, in San Diego, Orange, and some of these other counties that are coming off the list has not changed. The governor has stated he wants to move everybody off at once off that list. Uh, we have to be off the list as it stands now for 14 days in a row across about three major. Uh, metrics that the governor's watching and judging us on. We've got to be off for 14 days in a row before we can come off that list as it stands now. Uh, we're looking forward to the governor coming out uh, maybe as soon as this week, maybe next week, making some changes to uh, how they're monitoring counties. Uh, I know that there are some announcements being worked on, and so we're looking forward to hearing anything that allows Kern and provides Kern County greater local authority uh, to determine our future, uh, and we continue to uh, convey that message to to the state. Uh, Ryan, we have seen uh, national uh, uh, polls and stuff to, uh, saying Kern County is a hot spot for COVID, that the number of cases are preventing us from maybe coming off some of these metrics and watch lists. Is there something, and we see pictures from other areas, LA, giant mansion parties, people gathering with no masks. Is there some place or something we're missing with why our numbers seem to be uh, keeping us in that, in that you know, area? Yeah, I think, uh you know, we need to we need to continue to do uh, a, a job. In fact, I think we need to do a better job. Uh, individual responsibility is very important here. Folks need to be paying attention about how they interact with others. Uh, th this this is really being spread. I would say not uh, interacting at a business locally. It's being spread through other gatherings, uh, through families, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where we've seen uh, the, 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 you know, the, that's been the catalyst for the spread here locally. Um, you know, so we continue to, to ask people to be vigilant. Um, we're high on numbers. Uh, we've got three parameters, hospitalizations, testing rate, case rate. Our numbers are coming down. Uh, we are getting closer to where the state wants us to be. Uh, on hospitalization, percentage of hospitalizations uh, on that parameter, we're actually below uh, and, and doing a very good job, uh, well below where the state wants us to be. Uh, so we are ahead there, uh, but have a, some work to do on case rate and, 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 and testing rate. Um, and uh, we're getting lower with each day. Um, we're doing a better job. We got more work to do. Uh, so uh, we need to stay vigilant. People need to understand that uh, they have individual responsibility. Uh, you know, at some point, the role of government ends and individual responsibility begins. Uh, we need to continue to be, as a society here locally, vigilant, practicing good hygiene, paying attention to public health orders, et cetera. And Ryan, I think we have time for one more question, but going off of that, how would you grade Kern County's response to the virus and not necessarily just the public health department or government officials, but the Kern County community as a whole? How do you think the response has been? I think the response has been good. I think the virus is here. Uh, it's spreading. We're not going to stop it. We've said that all along. It's going to be here for months and months. It's going to be in our country and, and in our state for months and months. The, the, the uh, call to action is to help us prevent the overwhelming of our medical system and our hospitals. We're doing a good job on that. We're in a good position there. Uh, but there is no playbook on this. We have no, we've never been through this before. This will be the professional challenge of my lifetime as a county executive, as a local government executive. Uh, this is all new. Uh, we're making the very best decisions that we can. Again, there's no playbook. And uh, that's, the, that's the situation we're in where we are being overwhelmed with a very, very tough challenge. Uh, this, this virus is very, very tough, uh, but I think we're doing a very good job, um, both as a government and as a, a county. Uh, our citizens, our residents are doing a good job. We could always, it doesn't mean we have to, you know, to take a break. We always, there's always room for improvement. So on our side, we're going to continue to improve as we go. We're asking residents to stay vigilant, improve, continue to distance, uh, wear a mask if you're going into places where you can't avoid distancing, wash your hands, uh, clean surfaces, be smart, uh, and, uh, and have some patience. And uh, this thing will all work out at some point, but uh, we've got to get through it. 
County Administrator Officer Ryan Alsop. I want to thank you for your time this morning and joining us. Thanks for having me, guys.